Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to the shop here at NTD Racing. Behind me is Honcho, our 1978 Jeep J10 Desert Race Truck. We raced it a couple races, the Baja 1000 a couple times. And if you watch this series of me building this truck, I used Bentec, two angle grinders, my tube bender to make the entire chassis for this vehicle so it can be done. Now we're building a new truck named Lefty. It's gonna be a Ford Raptor Trophy truck. And this time it was a little cooler because I did all of the the designing for the chassis in Bentec, but then we actually went to Bentec and cut all the tubes on their Dragon 400, which was an amazing experience. And you see me in the last couple of videos as I've been getting those tubes ready and welding and those kinds of things. Uh, one of the things we didn't do while we were at Bentec, however, is we didn't cut any of the tubes that had bends in them. So what we're gonna be working on today is that one main hoop that makes up the B pillar. It's gonna have two bends and two cuts on the end, and I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. And then more importantly, how do we orient the cuts on the ends of the tubes? And so you can do that in case you're working on your own rig. So with that, let's go ahead and start by looking at the Bentec software, figure out what information we need to take from there and where it's at. We'll go ahead and start cutting some steel, bending it, and see if we can't make the B-pillar for Lefty. So this was not one of the tubes that we cut at Bentec, like you see all the ones down here, which are ready to go with all the copes. This one, I was gonna save till I got back because it has a bend, and it'd be too big to crate and all those things. So this tube is being cut here, 105 and three quarter inches, and I've measured it, double checked it, triple checked it. 105 inch tube is an expensive tube. You mess it up and there's gonna be some tears. Anyway, it's here in my bandsaw. Let's go ahead and uh, chop it off and then we'll clean it up, start marking it and get it ready to bend. All right, so if you've been uh, watching along in this process, here is what Lefty's roll cage, uh, full chassis is gonna look like. I spent a couple uh, videos making the front the rear and also the main roll cage part. And you can go back and check out those videos. But today what we're concerned with is this B pillar hoop right here, which we're gonna go ahead and uh, work on. So a couple different places we needed to go to get the information and transfer those just to build, take them and put them onto that tube. We'll start with the parts. Um, this is number part number four is what this tube is called. So I'm gonna go over to part details. And what that's gonna give me, it's gonna tell me all of the information I need to transfer onto the tube. These dimensions here, I'm gonna write these down on a piece of paper, 19 and 9 16, 76 and 1 16. At those points, I need to bend the tube 73 degrees. I need to account for my own spring back. These values can be put into Bentec and saved. I have them on a piece of paper for all the bends I've made so I can go back and forth. A couple other really cool things that you can do is, uh, you know, obviously you can zoom in and kind of see, make sure your copes kind of make sense to you and all that kind of stuff. You can go over and you can say, let me check out what the bend order is supposed to be. And you can actually play it. And this is how it will look as it goes through your bender, just so you can kind of have a reference uh, of how you're supposed to do that. So that's pretty, uh, pretty handy. But with that, so we got those dimensions. Now we need to also figure out how are we going to cut these copes and what you'll do is um, go back over to your main page here and then go over to cutting and on that part four if we kind of zoom in you can kind of see there's part four that's this side of the cut and then this if i click this one over here that's this cut over here you can just go ahead and qc again one more time uh what this is a tube that i'm going to cut i'm going to cut it in relation to this tube you can kind of see what that cope is going to look like in there and if i double click on that what it's going to do it's going to bring up this this template that i will have to cut out on a piece of paper it has all the information on there that will be applicable to that piece and we'll, i'll show you how to use that stuff and uh, some of this stuff and we'll hit print on that and then we'll go ahead and print both of those so first, I'm gonna show you how I take all those dimensions, bend the tubes, I'm gonna cut out these templates, show you how I put the templates on, and let's see all the steps to make this part. All right, so we have our notes, our cleaned off piece of tube that we're gonna bend. Now we need to get the information from the notes onto the tube. And I, it could be just as easy as you get the tape measure up there and you start marking points. I'm gonna to try to be a little bit more accurate, realize that the Bentec software is extremely accurate, the Dragon's within a couple thousandths of an inch, so I'm gonna to try to get as close as I possibly can. And I, and I find that sometimes, you know, with a longer tube and working the tape measure, I'm not super accurate. So this is what I do, is I grab myself from our local hardware store a piece of angle aluminum, and I'll show you why I like this thing so much, is I'm gonna take the dimensions and I'm gonna transfer them, transfer those onto 
the aluminum. So the first one is 19 and 9 16 of an inch. The other thing I'm going to do is I don't use the end of the tape measure. I start at the 10. Uh, and so I line up the end of this angle aluminum on the 10. And then I'm going to come over here to 29 and 9 16 I'm going to make a mark with my pencil. And it, the aluminum takes the pencil mark pretty good. I'm also going to go out to 30, which is going to give me a mark at 20 inches down the line. I'll show you why I'm going to do that here in a second. The second mark I need to make for the next two bend is at 76 and 1 16th of an inch. I'm going to go out over here to 56 and 1 16th plus 10, 66 and 1 16th. I'm going to make another mark here on this piece of angle aluminum. Now that I've got all the stuff on the angle aluminum, I'm just going to go ahead and flip this thing up here. And you can see why I really like this is because the aluminum immediately kind of snaps itself parallel to the tube. You can mark a line or whatever you need to do uh, with that. But I'm going to go ahead now and transfer those lines onto the round tube. I'm also going to transfer that 20 inch line on there because what I'm going to do is since my, my angle aluminum is only, only about 56 inches long, I'm going to go ahead and move that now and line up the end of the aluminum on that line and then come over to that point that I had over here at 56 inches and that's going to give me my 76 and 1 16th of an inch. There you go. So just a couple different ways that you can use that and you can see I have a couple different sizes to uh, to accommodate that kind of stuff. Now that it's accurately on there, I'll probably go back in and mark that in permanent marker so I don't lose it as I go through the tube bender. But let's take this, throw it into the, uh, the tube bender, start bending the tubes for lefty. So here are just some of my lessons learned from using at least this tube bender. It's the JD squared model 32 is that the, whatever your bender is mounted on has got to be parallel with the ground as best as you possibly can. So it's gotta be true. And what that allows you to do is you have to make sure that the tube as it's feeding into the bender is also parallel. Maybe not necessarily critical if you got one bend, but if you got multiple bends, in a tube that you need to make sure that it goes in parallel. Otherwise, the, the second bend is gonna be nearly impossible to make it perfect in relation to the first bend. Uh, and then if you look at the end of the tube, I've got a clamp on there and that is basically my angle cube in a, a clamp. And I think that uh, the guys from Swag Off Road make something like this also. And that allows me to measure the rotation angle. So as I move this thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it forward. I'm gonna make sure that, that there is zero rotation angle on the tube as I clamp it in for the second bend. And that's gonna be another thing that ensures that the first bend is in the same plane as the second bend I do. And I, I think I hit it pretty close. And you'll see that as I lay this down on my, uh, my fat table. Let's take a quick look at the results. And I'm really happy with as far as the rotation goes. You would know if if it wasn't like in the same angle all the way around because it would wobble back and forth and you'd hear it on the table. And this is absolutely perfect because it's flat on the table. So I'm really happy with that. One thing I did mess up and, and you know, I'm no pro, so I'm totally happy to show you my errors is I was going for 73 degrees and we we're about two and a half degrees over bent on both of them are exactly the same. And what that tells me is that my zero point for where I set the uh, the machine up to start the, the bend was wrong. It was incorrect and it was off by about two degrees. And I think what I'm doing and I will change in the future is I actually move the hydraulic until it engages and I actually hear the hydraulic just slightly whine and then I will set my zero point. I'm not gonna do that in the, in the future. What I'll do, I'll kind of come over here to the machine and, and show you what I'm gonna do is once I have the tube in in the uh, the tube bender, let me get this piece out, and it's all the way over here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this pin out, which is for the hydraulic, and I'm gonna manually pull this thing all the way until the tube bender engages the tube and it won't move any further. And then at that point, I'll go ahead and then I will set the dial. And then I'll bring the hydraulic all the way back out and put the pin back in. And I think that'll be a little bit more accurate and more repeatable, uh, better yet, just because, you know, I'm kind of waiting to hear a little bit of whine from the, the hydraulic and it's probably already too far. And I've proven it, it's actually about two and a half degrees too far from what my original spring back plan was. So, 
But besides that, you know, I, I still think, think we can go ahead and use this tube. Um, what we got to do now is cope the ends. So let me show you what we have to do to, uh, to get the ends coped now that we have bends on the tube. All right, two thoughts as I get to cutting out the template for the uh, one of the copes. This is, first off, it's just one of them. So if you've watched my video where we took our whole program, we went to Bentech and used their Dragon, and we cut 115 tubes in three hours. And now you see how long it takes me just to cut one end of one tube. And this is just a paper template that I need. You'll see all the steps and how much time is saved if you if you do this for a living buying a dragon is, is just a no brainer to me. The other point is, uh, as I'm cutting these things, is I'm, I'm getting ready to transfer these marks onto the tube is, you know, aim small, miss small. Every error you make compounds itself down the line. So I'm trying to, as best I can, use a simple tool and, and cut as closely as I can to that line so that I transfer this perfect thing. It's because the, the dimensions, like I said, even on this printed piece of paper that come from Bentec are close within thousandths of an inch. So I'm trying to preserve that as best I can as I make this template. Let's go ahead and take it over to the table and see how we apply this template onto the tube. Okay, so now that you have your template, how do you locate it on the tube? And this is a part that is just totally different than the way you would do it if there were no bends in the tube. So maybe if you're gonna pay attention, this is what I would pay attention to. Uh, to locate it radially and then also laterally down the tube, the dimensions are gonna be slightly different in that as opposed to measuring the distance between the two templates, we're gonna be measuring from the end. So in this case, for this one, it says two, uh, two and three eighths of an inch. So again, I got my piece of angle aluminum. I'm lining up with the, uh, the 10 over here. Come on over to the 12 and one, two, three eighths, and I'm gonna make my mark there. And that's where I'll make my mark from the end of the tube. The second one is that it says line up with the outside radius of the, uh, the tube. Now, what does that mean? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from the end that you're gonna cope, you're gonna come back to the very first bend. And what I do is I, I basically clamp that bend to a table. And then now what I wanna do is I wanna measure basically halfway up the tube. So this is a two inch tube. So I need to make a mark one inch from the base of the table onto the tube. Well, again, this super handy piece of angle aluminum is a one inch by one inch piece of aluminum. So all I need to do now is bring that piece of aluminum up to the side of the tube and then with a really fine pencil, mark a line, which is that one inch up from the, uh, the table. And then I have the other mark on there for the two and three eighths. I'm gonna go ahead and line that up with the, the very end. I'm gonna put that mark on there. And then now with that, I can use those two locations to locate the template exactly. Now I see people talking all the time about using a vinyl and cutting it out and sticking it on there. The reason I don't like vinyls is, is two. One is that once you put it on there, you can't move it. And you saw, I basically set this thing on there, I taped it, got it all lined up perfectly here. And then once it was taped, now I can kind of spin it around and line the two lines up and then also bring it back and basically move it. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and mark this with a Sharpie marker to, to transfer what I need to cut off of here. And then I'll slide the, the sleeve, this, this uh, template all the way up here. And I actually will leave it on even while I'm welding, maybe right up to the point I need to paint the, uh, the roll cage. I'll leave that thing on there just in case I need to roll back down for reference or something like that. I'll leave that there. All right, so it's uh, time to cut these things out. And I know a lot of guys are like, don't, don't coach me how to use an angle grinder, but I'll, there's some guys maybe you want to know. So this is what I do. Um, first thing I do is I get the angle grinder up to speed. I like lightly touch it to the metal, and then I'll walk it into that black line. And what I want to do is cut it just as close as I can, about a hair width from that white line, and then I 
kind of score back and forth to make sure that the line is going to be where I want it. And then I'll go ahead and plunge the, uh, the blade into what I'm cutting. And, and it works pretty good. Once you get, get used to it, you can cut pretty close to that line. Once I'm done with that, I drop the angle grinder that's plugged in. That one is so fast. And again, safety equipment is paramount. And then I pick up my battery opera. This is my 20 volt DeWalt. And again, it's on our Amazon page. If you check the links below or go to ntdracing.com, you can find this angle grinder. And I like this one because it, it goes a little bit slower. And I put my, this is a flap disc I'm using now. And the flap disc allows me to walk the rest of the way and just cut the rest of that black line off. And this is a well-used flap disc. It's, you know, it's kind of radius because I've used it so many times. You can use a new one, but this one, after a while, I save the old ones and it makes it really easy to make a nice uh, tight cut. Again, safety equipment, gloves, double eye protection, especially when you're using one of the ones that are plugged in because it's spinning that disc so fast, it could totally go through your first layer of eye protection. All right, here's everything set up and ready to go to start welding. Here's a look at that joint we just made. This is first try. This wasn't even taking it out and taking a couple of hacks. All I did is basically ground off until there was no more black line. And you can see it sits up there and fits just perfectly. So you see some extra clamps here. Um, you know, obviously we talked about it before. I overbent these by two degrees. So basically what I had to do is I'm basically pulling these out just a little bit and then I'm compressing it this way. Once I get it tacked up, it'll be held in place and it won't move anymore. Besides that, everything else is centered, squared, and all those kinds of things. And I'm really happy, again, you know, just with the fitment of all the stuff that, this is the stuff that came out of the Dragon 400. You can see the fitment is just perfect. I mean, these are gonna be really easy, kind of fun welds to go through. Once again, totally impressed with, uh, with Bentec. So I've said it before, you could build an entire race truck. Let me bring you over here and remind you, you could build an entire race truck with Bentec and two angle grinders. And in this case, uh, Bentec and the Dragon 400 and a little bit of angle grinders also. So let's get to some welding. All right, here's the finished project. I'm pretty happy with the fusion that's going on with the welds. I could probably work a little bit more on the aesthetics of the welds, but they're coming along, not so bad. Be happy uh, driving in a truck with those over my head. So uh, anyway, I don't know, about 30 welds down, only about 200 more to go. Got to get to it. All right, well, you've heard me say it before. People ask, what is the best kind of tube notcher to get? I always say, forget the tube notchers get two angle grinders and the Bentec software and you can see the kind of stuff that you're able to make. Now these copes were pretty easy, but if you look at what I did on Honcho, there were places where we had like nine tubes all joining to one center point and you can't do that with a tube notcher, but you can do it actually pretty easily with the, uh, the Bentec software, which is amazing. So anyway, a lot of really great stuff that is coming up as we continue this lefty build. I'm gonna get started working on the rear suspension parts to get all that stuff together. We're gonna to work on the engine cradle, getting the engine mounted, and then the whole front of the, the roll cage and the chassis. I hope you'll consider joining us for those. Maybe ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. Leaving us a like and a comment always helps us out. We definitely do appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.